Hello and welcome to this video in which we're going to examine mathematically and hopefully calculate some currents in a balanced star network. So here's an example of such a network. We have a, a, a star network here and we can see that we have a star connected source or voltage source connected to um, a star connected load made up of three impedances. And in this particular example, we're going to look at a case where these impedances are complex. They're not just uh, purely resistive uh, loads, but they're actually uh, complex, made up of uh, real and reactive uh, components. Before we begin, let's just discuss briefly what we mean when we say balanced, uh, a balanced network. Uh, we're assuming a few things in this case. Firstly, we're assuming that the voltages um, which supply this network, these three voltages, are of equal magnitude and that they're equally separated by a phase angle of 120 degrees. The second thing we're assuming is that the impedances in this network are equal. So we have three impedances that make up our load here and we're assuming that they're all equal. And if they're both the case, then it means that the currents that flow in this network will also be of equal magnitude. You'll notice also in this diagram, I have a, a dotted line here to represent the neutral line that connects the star point of the source to the star point of the load. And that's drawn as a dotted line, um, partially because th there exist star networks that don't include a neutral wire. These are called three wire star networks. They only have the three the three lines, and then four wire star networks which do include this neutral connection. We're not going to discuss the neutral connection too much in this video uh, because what we'll see actually is if our network is perfectly balanced um, according to these assumptions that we've made here, then the current that flows in this neutral line will be zero. And so the line is essentially superfluous to requirement really. We don't need it. Uh, providing that the network is perfectly balanced. In later videos, we're going to look at unbalanced networks where there will be a current flow. And we'll also look at something called neutral displacement where there is an imbalance, but that neutral wire uh, isn't present. And we'll see the consequences of that in a later video as well. For the purposes of this example, though, let's say that we have uh, three voltages, we'll call them V1, V2 and V3 as they are in the diagram. And let's say that these voltages are represented by these values here. We've got 240 volts at an angle of zero degrees, at an angle of minus 120 degrees and an angle of plus 120 degrees. So we have um, sort of agreed with our first assumption that we made earlier. We've got three voltages, they're all of equal magnitude and they're all separated by this phase angle of 120 degrees. Let's also say that we have um, an impedance of Z equals three plus J five ohms. And let's just assume for the sake of this example that each of our load impedances, Z1, Z2, and Z3 are all equal to this value. So the, the, the load um, impedance is consistent in that it'll, it'll always be three plus J five ohms. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll work out and calculate the phase currents that um, flow through each of our load impedances. Now, one of the characteristics of the star network is the current th that flows through the phase is going to be equal to the current that flows through the line. And that kind of makes sense intuitively looking at the diagram. You can see that that current that flows through the line must necessarily be the same current that flows through the phase. Uh, we're also going to look at delta networks where that's not the case and, and there'll be a few extra steps involved there. But for our case, we can simply say that the phase voltage, we've, we've been given the phase voltage uh, for each of these phases, the phase voltage divided by the phase impedance is going to give us the phase current. We'll set that up just below here. We'll say that we have three equations now. So I1, the current that flows through Z1, as it were, must be equal to V1 divided by Z. I'm just saying Z because all of the impedances are the same. Um, I2 must be equal to V2 over Z, and I3 must be V3 over Z. 
So let's go ahead and work these out. Um, beginning with I1, we can say I1 we said was V1 over Z, so that's 240 at an angle of zero degrees divided by our impedance, which is three plus J5. So we run into a problem here straight away because our numerator is in polar form, our denominator is in rectangular or Cartesian form. Um, we, we can use either uh, to, to perform this division, um, but we've got to be consistent. The easiest method in this case is probably just to make these all uh, polar form. So converting that, um, that denominator there, 3 plus J5, into polar form, uh, you can do that just using a, um, a scientific calculator. Normally there's a, there's a function called pol for polar. Um, but by converting that, we get uh, 5.831 at an angle of 59.036 degrees. When we divide in polar form, it's very easy. We just divide the magnitudes, 240 divided by 5.831. And we subtract the angle, so we have 0 minus 59.036. And that's going to give us this result here, uh, 41.159 at an angle of minus 59.036 degrees. And that's a current, so it's in amps. We'll not repeat the method for the other currents. Uh, it's a very similar idea. The only thing that's going to be different is rather than 0 degrees for our voltage, uh, we'll be using the other, uh, the other angles for the other voltages, uh, minus 120 degrees and plus 120 degrees, respectively. But by following this exact same method, we'll get I2 as being 41.159 at an angle of minus 179.036 degrees. And I3 as being 41.159 at an angle of 60.964 degrees. And they're in amps as well. So a few things to notice just very quickly. First of all, you'll notice hopefully that the magnitude of each of these currents is equal, which is a good sign, making reference to those assumptions that we made at the start. These, um, these angles here, minus 59, minus 179, uh, and plus 60.9 degrees, well, it's not immediately obvious just at a glance but when we plot those on a phase and diagram which we'll do here what we'll hopefully see is that we have those currents equally separated um, throughout 360 degrees so they're, they're each 120 degrees apart from one another and we get that uh, arrangement that we see in the phasor diagram there. Just a quick note on phasor diagrams here um, when we draw a phasor diagram the sort of default angle or the zero degrees angle is pointing to the right. So we can think of, of pointing to the right as kind of being like our default position or our starting position. And a positive angle will tilt upwards from that point. A negative angle will tilt downwards from that point. So let's just pick on a few examples here. V1 was at an angle of zero degrees. And so we can see that V1 points to the right. Uh, I1... Uh, we saw was at an angle of minus 59 degrees, and so we see that it tilts downwards by 59 degrees. Similarly, I3 uh, tilted upwards because it's positive, plus 60.964 degrees, so we see that it tilts upwards from that horizontal position by 60.694 degrees. And that's the same for all of the other, um, all the other currents and voltages that we've plotted on our diagram here. One last thing before we finish up this video is just to return to this idea of the neutral current or the neutral wire that we saw um, in our original diagram there. And what we said was that the neutral current will be zero if the network is perfectly balanced. So just to finish up this video, let's prove that very quickly because we can say that the neutral current must be equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. And that's because the neutral current sort of feeds from that star point where those three currents meet. And so what we can say is that IN must be equal to these three currents added together. And we've already calculated 
I1, I2 and I3. Uh, the problem being that these are in polar form, um, it's not as convenient to add in polar form. And so what we'll do is we'll convert back uh, to rectangular form. Again, you can just use the, the rec function on a scientific calculator to do that. But we now have these three same currents, but now they're in rectangular form rather than polar form. And I've made a little bit of rounding error here, likely, uh, because I've rounded to three decimal places, both when we converted to polar in the first place, and then I've converted back to rectangular again. So they won't perfectly add up to zero, but you can do this yourself, and you'll find that um, bar some very small rounding error, we'll get a result that's, that's around zero plus J zero amps. In other words, these three currents um, add together at the neutral point or the star point uh, to a magnitude of zero. And that's why our neutral current uh, flowing through that neutral wire is zero in a balanced network. In a later video, we're going to look at unbalanced networks as well, where this isn't the case. But for now, we'll leave that video there. I hope you found it useful. Uh, first of all, in handling a, a star network that consists of impedances that aren't just purely resistive, that are complex impedances, but then how we can calculate the currents and plot a phasor diagram for that network as well.